Now, though you know, don't know the uh, insides of the op amp, right? Uh, we have not dealt with transistors. You, of course, do know that it needs a power supply, okay? And maybe your op amp needs, let's say, some supplies I am putting down with respect to some ground. And your uh, circuit may also, your system may also include, let us say, some digital parts that operates from a single 3.3 volt supply. Single supply means that there is ground and there is one supply, either positive or negative. Dual supply means that if you have a ground, there is one supply above and one supply below. Okay? And there can be further variants. In fact, if you look at either a modern day system on chip or a large system, you will have like many different supply voltages. Okay, Some of them need high voltage, some of them need uh, lower voltages and even in the low voltage there can be further, there can be 1.8 volts, 3.3 volts, 1.2 volts, 1 volt and so on Okay, and also negative ones. And typically the source of power, what is the source of power for all your electronic gadgetry? Some battery Okay, and that generates some fixed voltage. Now, that voltage itself depends on, I mean this is more related to the chemistry of the battery. So, there are some characteristic voltages for different chemical reactions. What is the voltage of the battery in your mobile phone? Huh? 3.7 volts, yeah. So, this uh, lithium batteries have uh, 3.7 volts and then uh, you know the AA and AAA batteries. What is the voltage of that? One point. 1.5, what? Five, yeah. And there are some batteries with 1.2 volts as well. Uh, and if you have a car battery, it is 12 volts. So the sources themselves have different voltages. And also, more importantly, it's not as though it will be 3.700 volts. Okay. So if you take a freshly charged battery, it can be 4.5. Then it kind of, as you draw current from it, it rapidly discharges to about 3.7, where it will hold for some time. And after a while, it will discharge rapidly. It's kind of useless after this. Meaning, useless meaning it is discharged and you have to recharge it. Okay, so the battery voltage itself will keep on varying. So now, what we need is a circuit which will take this, the battery voltage, which may be you know the range, but not very, uh, not the precise value at any time. And on top of it, uh, the circuits don't necessarily operate at this voltage, so you have to supply these voltages right you have to somehow come up with this 5 volts and minus 5 volts and 3.3 volts and these you want to keep as precisely defined as possible okay so how would you go about doing that how do you make a precisely defined voltage what is that huh schmidt trigger how will that help First of all, to keep something accurate, you have to use negative feedback. That is, somehow or the other, you have to sense the actual voltage that is here, feed it back, and there has to be some magic inside this box that will look at the actual voltage and control things so that it is equal to the desired voltage. Okay? So, we need negative feedback. Now, before we go there, we also need to be able to convert from one voltage to another. Okay? How do you convert one voltage to another? Hmm? Resistive divider. Okay. What else? What do you use for AC? I mean, we have like kilo volts of lines outside and 230 volts here. In case of AC, it is quite easy. Uh, it is transformers, right? So, in fact, that is why AC uh, powering 1 over DC, right? You may have heard of this famous fight between Edison and Tesla. So, Edison was supporting DC, but he lost out. But maybe DC will come back. So, uh, transformers can easily, uh, because AC is, uh, you can use transformers which are magnetically coupled but electrically isolated and they work, they do not work for DC, they work for AC, you can use them for that. But here we are, uh, the battery produces DC and the circuits that you use also use DC. So, we have to have some DC conversion mechanism. Okay? So, one of the suggestions was to use a volt, uh, resistive voltage divider. Okay? So, does it work for everything? Does it work for, let us say, all the cases that I have outlined here? Huh? I have a 3.7 volt battery, 
and uh, my op amp needs plus 4 5 volt and minus 5 volts and also maybe my digital circuit needs 3.3 volts or 1.8 volts does it work for everything what does it not work for clearly you can't increase the voltage with a resistive divider nor can you invert the voltage that is you can't get a negative voltage from a positive voltage but let's take the case of uh, maybe 3.3 or 1.8 it doesn't matter so let's say i have i'll model the battery as an ideal voltage source it's not going to be ideal there will be some source resistance and then i have my circuit which needs 1.8 volts so what should i do maybe I'll, for simplicity i'll make this 3.6 what should i do huh? equal resistors okay so across this huh? yeah so we have to figure out what to do right huh? so uh, vcvs so okay first of all this will give you 1.8 volts here and i was going to connect it there but then he warned me that okay that will change the voltage so i have to put a vcvs but the vcvs needs a power so <laughs> where do i get that from it needs a power supply where do i get that from so first uh, will this work uh, what do you have to do to get it to work uh, adjust R. One is, of course, essentially there will be some uh, load current, let me call that I L, okay. And if I make it R and R, what will be this voltage? Less than 1.8 volts, okay. So, there are a couple of things that you can do. So, this whole thing, first of all, can be represented by a thevenin equivalent which is what what is the voltage source value huh? 1.8 volts and what is the resistance value r by 2 okay so now if you model the load as a current source of value il i don't know the load can be modeled as a resistor or as a current source here i am choosing to model it as a current source then the voltage here will be what Huh? 1.8 minus I L times R by 2. Okay, so it will be less than 1.8 for sure. So one possibility is, let's say you make this R1 and R2, which are different from each other. So then this will not be 1.8 volts. This will be 3.6 times R2 by R1 plus R2. And what will be the thevenin resistance? R1 parallel R2. So instead of this, you get 3.6 R2 by R1 plus R2 minus IL times R1 parallel R2. So now you can try to play around with the values of R1 and R2 so that this becomes equal to 1.8. Okay, so that's a possibility. Is this fine? Now, what problems do you foresee with this? Huh? Yeah, so if I L changes, what happens? The voltage will change. So this won't work at all. Okay. Because and I L is expected to change. Any circuit it can be sometimes on, sometimes off. Deliberately you turn things off to save power. Or even during the normal operation, it could be taking a time varying current. And if it takes a time varying current, now the supply itself will become time varying. Okay. So what other solution do you have with this? Huh? Very small R. Okay. So one thing is if you use equal resistors and make r very small so that i l times r by 2 is much smaller than 1.8 then even if i l changes this will change a little bit let's say it changes by 10 millivolts so then it will be correct to within 10 millivolts okay is this fine so what problem do you foresee with that power consumption okay how much power uh, power consumption where yeah i know but how much will that power be oh that's okay but uh, you have to compare it to the power drawn by the desired circuit right so i square r i mean let's say i am consuming 100 watts 
and I am burning extra 1 milliwatt, I would not care or maybe even 1 watt. On the other hand, if I am uh, burning 100 watts and then I have to burn extra like 500 watts, obviously I care, even 100 watts I would care. So, what do you think it will be here? The extra power burnt in comparison to the power in the load, is it more or less the same? You understand the power dissipated in R 1 and R 2 compared to the power drawn by the load, that is what efficiency is right. So, there is some power supplied by this which is equal to the power in these plus the power in the load. So, the power in the load divided by the actual actual power taken from the source that is efficiency and we would like that to be as close to 100 percent as possible in order to not waste power. But what do you think it will be if we use a resistive divider and make sure that the output voltage is close to 1.8 volts. Huh? 50 percent, so let us say I choose the condition. So, that this voltage is 1.8 volts minus I L R L by 2. Okay. So, let me say that it should not fall below 1.7 volts. Okay. So, what is the how much power will be dissipated in that? Please make a quick calculation, let me know. What answers did you get? Huh? 5 percent. Okay. So, many of you got it, but uh, maybe that is right. But simply just looking at the circuit. So, let us say first of all, I have an open circuit here. Okay, let us say I have an open circuit. What will be the current flowing here? What will be the current flowing there? Yeah, 3.6 by 2 times R. Okay. Now I connect some load current I L and I tell you that this voltage must not change much, okay, must change by very little. Okay. Then what comment can you make about 3.6 by 2 R versus I L? Huh? or you cannot say anything. You understand the question? If I did not connect anything 3.6 by 2 R would be flowing. If I connect I L you know the voltage will for sure change, but I am saying the voltage should change by very very small amount I do not know 5 percent 10 percent something. So, then what can you say about the current that was flowing in that branch versus the load current that you connected? It has to be large right. Because what is the total current here? This is just the direct superposition stuff, right? That is why I gave you a current source, which to make it easier. So, I have V s r and r. So, the current flowing here because of V s is V s by 2 r, V s by 2 r. Okay? And if I connect a load current I L this way, what will be the current in each of the resistors? What is it? What is the current now? Hey, is it a difficult problem? What is the current? What is the current in the upper resistor? Plus I L by 2 minus I L by 2. Okay. So, obviously, the actual voltage drop across this is this whole thing times r. Okay. So, if uh, this part had should not affect the voltage then the original current should have been very large okay, much larger than I L and how much larger depends on what is the percent change that is allowed. So, already you know that the efficiency is going to be very bad because you have to I mean this is an approximate calculation even without I L being connected the current in this is much more than I L. So, you have to be uh, dissipating V s times 
some i x which is much more than V s times I l. Okay. What is the power delivered to the load after I l is connected? Approximately what is it? V s V s by 2 which is the voltage times I l. So, clearly I mean this efficiency cannot come anywhere close to 90 percent or anything. If you calculate it correctly, you should get it to be much much smaller than 1 okay. and you can calculate it exactly also. I mean exactly meaning I mean there are various levels of exactness, but an approximation will uh, suffice here. I said that essentially the extra voltage drop V s times R by 2 sorry R by 2 should be 0 0.1 volts. Okay. So, R is 0 0.1 volt divided by V s times 2. So, V s here is basically I think I made a mistake here. So, I L times uh, this is 0 0.1 volts. So, R is this times this divided by I L. Okay. So, again you can try to uh, calculate this exactly or you simply assume that when the load is not connected the current flowing here as or the R value is this much. So, V s square divided by 2 times 2 R which is 2 times 0 0.1 by L this will come out to be V s square divided by 0 0.8 times I L. Okay. So, you can calculate this and I think that uh, 5 percent number sounds kind of right. You can do the calculations you can also I mean I have ignored some things here you can also include that parts and then see. The one other thing I want to point out. So, this is the Thevenin equivalent of this one. So, when you say Thevenin or Norton equivalent what is equivalent between the two circuits? I mean we say that hey some complicated circuit we have and then we have its Thevenin equivalent and these two are equivalent, but what is equivalent about them? Ah, you evaluate the equivalent bit across a pair of terminals okay, either Thevenin or Norton the voltage across the terminal and the current flowing through the terminal those are what are equivalent, but this equivalent cannot be used for any power calculations. Okay. So, do not calculate the power from the Thevenin equivalent that would not work at all. Okay. After all I mean this circuit could have like 1000 resistors and the equivalent will always have this and one resistor. Okay. So, you cannot use it for power you have to use it for the terminal voltage and the terminal current. Okay. Fine. So, anyway the bottom line whatever the exact answer is if you use resistive uh, divider you have to make sure that the current through the divider is much more than the load current. So, that necessarily means a gross inefficiency. Okay. So, how else might we do this basically the moment you put resistors you have a problem right because you have loss right. So, you cannot actually do this with resistors. So, you have to do it with lossless components that is why transformers are great I mean transformer is basically two inductors whose magnetic fields are coupled together, but inherently there is no loss there is some parasitic loss because you cannot get superconducting wires and the every wire will have some resistance, but besides that the process of uh, magnetic induction there is no power loss at all right in the transformer and you know that in the ideal transformer the power going this way is the power that is coming out. Okay. So, we need something like that, but it unfortunately does not work for DC. So, what is it that give me some ideas first of all what components are allowed? Yeah, once again. Huh? Okay, what I mean it is not that we have like a huge variety of choices here R and C, but if you use R you have power loss L and C Okay, you are allowed to use only L and C's and probably mutual inductance which is some also like L. What were you suggesting? No, no, they let us con not uh, mix up two issues. There are two things here one is to convert the level of the voltages from 3.7, you may have to go to 1.8 or maybe even higher, like 5 and so on. So, that is one problem. The other problem is precisely regulating it. So, first let us look at how to uh, just convert some voltages, it may have some uh, imprecision there then we will look at negative feedback and see how to control that. Okay. 
understand? So, first we look at how to change uh, DC voltages without incurring power loss. So, obviously, if you do not want loss, you are have only L's and C's, and how do you use this now? What is that? Yeah, so actually, we do need one more lossless element, which I think you are familiar with. Which is the switch, and this is the typical symbols for a switch. And this is a controllable, I mean, switch has a control, right? I mean, you can press the switch on or off, and electronically also you can control. And I will call the control as S, okay. And it has two terminals, let us say one and one prime. And as with any other element, I can define the voltage across the switch and the current through the switch, okay. I mean you are familiar with this right, you have plotted I V characteristics of uh, resistors, you know the I V relations of uh, a resistor I mean capacitors and inductors and so on. Are you familiar with the switch? Yes or no? No? Nobody is familiar? You have not switched on anything in your life. <laughs> so, this S I will assume this S is a logic signal. Okay, and let us say that I mean it is a binary logic signal, it has 0 and 1, and I will for now assume that logic 0 corresponds to the switch being off and logic 1 corresponds to the switch being on. So, when it is off, it means that there is an open circuit between 1 and 1 prime, and when it is on, there is a short circuit between. 1 and 1 prime that is the function of the switch right. So, you have two terminals you either short them that is on and you open them that is off and the control is basically because it the switch has two states the control is basically 1 bit right 1 binary digit. So, and for now convention sake I have taken uh, 0 logic 0 as the switch being off and logic 1 as switch being on ok. So, what kind of an element is a switch? What kind of an element is a resistor? I mean you huh? linear ok and capacitors and inductors are they linear or not? They are linear ok. What about a switch? Hmm? Yes sir, what I mean uh, li linear, non linear, can not tell what piece wise linear. Okay. How do you evaluate if a characteristic is linear or not? First of all, if you have an algebraic relationship between two quantities, you can make a graph right uh, between those two quantities. Like for a resistor, you can do it between I and V. For a capacitor, you cannot do it between I and V because they are related by a derivative, but you can do it between Q and V, okay, the charge and the voltage. Similarly, for an inductor, you can do it between phi, the flux linkage, and I. Okay. So, phi is linear with I and similarly Q is linear with uh, V for a capacitor. So, that should tell you that it is linear and also the derivative the differential equation relationship is also linear right. What is the how do you evaluate linearity in general? So, if you are I mean for linearity first of all you have to define some input and some output okay, or some cause and some effect. How do you evaluate I mean you are given some mathematical description of uh, the thing whatever it is. How do you evaluate if it is linear? Yeah, so you have to evaluate whether it follows superposition, right? Additivity and homogeneity. And graphically, it may be easier for simpler components. That's the general way of doing it. You have to first see basically if it follows superposition. If that's the case, then it is linear. And uh, for a, let's say we are talking about a simple uh, circuit with one input, one output, and you can graph the relationship between the input and output. How do you tell if it's linear? So, you should have a straight line characteristic passing through the origin. Okay. Now, what about this? So, like if you have the I V characteristic of a resistor, what is the characteristic? What is the characteristic between I and V of a resistor? Straight line passing through the origin and what is the slope? R 1 by R. Most of the time we end up plotting I versus V or if you plot V versus I it will be R. 
What is the IV characteristic of a switch? Depending, I mean, it depends on the logic of the control. So, let us say for an on switch, what is the characteristic? Switch that is on, what is the IV characteristic? Line parallel to y axis. How far away is it? At? It is the y axis, right? On switch, it is a short circuit. What is the voltage drop across this one? 0. So, it is the y axis. Okay. So, this is the characteristic of a short circuit. Short circuit, what short circuits do you know? A wire is a short circuit, a 0 volt source is a short circuit, it is the characteristic. And an off switch, it is the x axis. Okay. So, is it linear or not? Non linear. Why? It is straight line passing through the origin. It is linear, it is just that it is time variant. I mean, depending on the logic, it can vary, but in both states, it is linear, right? It is a straight line passing through the origin, it is linear, is not it? In the on state, it will have 0 voltage across it, regardless of the current. So, it will follow additivity and homogeneity and so on. If you multiply the current, you will still get 0 voltage, which is that homogeneous multiplier times 0. Okay. So, similarly, uh, it is basically linear. Okay. A switch is linear, it can be what is known as a time varying element. So, I think you have you know what a time linear time invariant circuit is, right? You must have spent a lot of time on these things in uh, signals and systems. So, you can have switches which are controlled by electrical signals and end up with time varying circuits. Okay. So, we would not go into any details of that, but I am just telling you that it is linear but time varying. So, you have to uh, make a distinction between that and non linear. Non linearity is something different, it does not follow superposition right. Any questions? So, we need this and what is the power dissipated in a switch? 0, why? Either the current is 0 through the switch in the off state or the voltage is 0 in the on state. So, in either case the switch has 0 power dissipation. So, it is also an element that we can use thankfully and we do need that. Okay. Any questions? I mean this is again like you can think of it as a two terminal or maybe a controllable two terminal element just like R L C and uh, uh, yeah R L and C and these are the I V characteristics. It is linear and it is uh, it is linear, but its state can be different. I mean it you can switch it between different linear characteristics. Okay. And its uh, power dissipation is always zero, whether it's in the on state or the off state. So, for our current goal, which is to make a dissipation-free voltage level converter, that is high efficiency voltage level converter, this is one more thing that we can use along with uh, inductors and capacitors. Obviously, I introduced it because we need it. Right? Uh, I don't know if you can find a way of doing it with only inductors and only capacitors. Is this okay? So, fine. So, so far the lossless elements that we know are L, C and switches. Okay. The other elements that we know have losses and when I say L, I mean if you want to you can also include M. So, what next? I want to take 3.6 volts and get 1.8 volts. How do I do this? How do these things help? I mean, you can think of anything that you want. I mean. So, one of the ways of thinking it might uh, thinking about it might be that uh, for AC transformers were useful. So, what is the next step now? Switch off one. So, 
So, for now let us not worry about how to generate control, let us assume that if you do have switches you can have the control waveform S to be whatever you want. Okay. So, let us not worry about how to generate that control at this moment. So, what are the possibilities right? I mean you know that uh, there are there is some technique that works for AC which is transformer, but it does not work for DC, but then now we have LCs and switches. So, what is the first thing that you can think of? Huh? Switching on and off. So, one thing is I mean possibly you can say that I, I take a DC battery and then if I keep switching it on and off I can get a waveform that looks like an AC waveform so that is the time varying and then maybe I can use a transformer right that is that is a reasonable idea is not it with a switch it looks like I can get uh, uh, AC how do I do that. No, no, do not worry about how to control the switch you are allowed to put any control on the switch that you want right the switch has some controlling uh, signal S you can design it to be whatever you want. So, do not worry about how to generate that for now. If I had a sinusoidal signal of V s and I use a let us say n is to 1 turn transformer. Are you familiar with transformers? So, what is the voltage here? V s by n and n I wrote n, but do not I do not imply that it is an integer or even more than one, it can be less than one. So, now first of all with switches can we arrange some waveform like this which goes both positive and negative. How do I do that? Yeah, so there are many things that are uh, possible. So, the simplest thing I was thinking of was what is AC it is it has alternating positive and negative values whereas, the polarity of this is fixed. So, I had thought that you would simply say that hey uh, so for some time you connect it like this and for some time this S bar is the complementary signal ok you connect it the other way around ok that is you take the voltage like this or like that. So, here you get plus V s and here you get minus V s right. If you keep switching between the two you could get an AC. So, that was what I was thinking about and of course, this s has to be periodic s bar is the complement of s I think you know this notation right. So, so if s is uh, like this then the voltage also will have the same uh, form it will have uh, basically it will alternate between plus V s and minus V s and then it looks like an AC except that it is not a sinusoid and potentially you could feed it to a transformer ok. So, that is possible, but uh, there are I mean so will this work for us. Does this work for us or not what uh, Can I do this? What is the hesitation? I forget this. Yeah, one problem is the output of this is also AC. So, maybe we have to reconvert it to DC. That can be done, but it is more uh, complicated. We will see a simpler solutions. That is one problem. And also, transformers, I mean, you do not want to feed them uh, harmonic rich waveforms like a sine wave, ok. Uh, sorry, square wave. They work well with sine waves. But if you have a, a sine wave and a lot of harmonics which is basically what a square wave is then it turns out again I am not sure if you are familiar with this the loss of these things increases as the frequency increases and so on. It is not easy to make a transformer that operates over a very wide range for one frequency you can somehow design the parameters very well, but uh, if you feed a square wave typically it does not work very well also it will have its own losses which are higher, but then the, we have the additional disadvantage also that the output itself is AC. So, that is another problem. Okay. 
So, any other ideas? I can't hear what you are saying. If you put a low pass filter, so yeah, that is the idea that we will use. We can't use a oh you mean you want to put a low pass filter here. Yeah. Huh? We do not need the transformer. So, there are many, I mean, there are many, many variants that are possible. The what you can do with switches is essentially reconfigure the circuit right I, and as the i mean if you have n switches you have 2 to the n possible states you don't have to go through all 2 to the n states okay like for instance with four switches i went through only two states not 16 but uh, there are so many different states and in each state essentially the circuit will be different so the voltages somewhere can be different okay so what is done what is commonly done one of the ways of uh, doing this is so let us say I have 3.6 volts and I want 1.8 volts eventually. So, now the first thing is I see that hey this is half of that. So, maybe I do this this is controlled by s and this is controlled by s bar where s is a waveform like this. Okay. The period is T s and the, it is on for half the time. Okay. Is this fine? You go to the tea shop and you do not have change right 6 rupees. So, and you have only 10 rupee notes. What you can do is like every week you pay 30 rupees and then uh, on one of the days and on the other four days you do not pay. So, that is duty cycling right. So, you pay at the rate of uh, one fifth of the time, but you pay higher on average you are paying 6 rupees all the time. I mean that works for the tea shop guy it does not work for our circuit, but uh, <laughs> let us see you understand I mean this kind of principle is used all the time right. I mean you want something some quantity, but uh, you could make uh, if you are restricted to let us say having different levels in this case I have used 3.6 and a 0. So, you can have 3.6 for some of the time and 0 for other uh, part of the time. So, that the average becomes 1.8. Okay. So, in this case you should have 3.6 for half the time and 0 for the other half of the time and you will get an average of 1.8 volts. Okay. The average value will be 1.8. The actual waveform here will be not 1.8 it will actually be alternating between 0 and 3.6 volts. Okay the average is 1.8 and in general if you imagine that this is on for a period alpha T s and it is periodically repeating at T s then what will be the average value? What is the average value going to be? What is that? Alpha times 3.6 that is all. Okay. So, we can generate something where it is of course, varying between uh, uh, 3.6 and 0, but the average is some value alpha times 3.6 and by controlling alpha we can get any voltage that we want. Okay. Yes. So, it would not actually. So, this circuit is not the final thing. The only virtue of this circuit is the average value is what we want and there is no loss because I have only used only switches. Okay. So, that is the part uh, that has been taken care of. So, I have gone from uh, having a higher DC voltage and not knowing what to do to having a higher DC voltage and getting an average voltage getting a waveform whose average value is what I want, but still this cannot be applied to my circuit. Okay. You cannot have an if you want your op amp uh, needs 5 volts you cannot have it like 10 volts half the time and 0 half the time it will not work at all. Okay. So, we have to uh, essentially extract the average out of this right. So, if we extract only the average then we will have only alpha times 
and we can use that to power our circuit. And any circuit that we use to extract the average must also use only lossless components. You understand? Okay. So, first we have the requirement of using only lossless components that means LC and switches. Now, with the only L and C I do not even know how to change the DC voltage. Okay. L is a short circuit for DC and C is open circuit for DC it is completely useless, but we do have an element S the switch which is which can be which uh, can have two states either open or short circuit and this will uh, allow you to reconfigure a circuit. Okay. So, what I can do is if I take a 3.6 volt source or any voltage source and allow connect it to the output for some time, but connect the output to 0 for the remaining time so to get any average that I want. So, now I can get the average value that I want, but I do not want I mean I cannot power the circuit with this in fact, I need a voltage like this. So, somehow I have to extract the average of this without incurring any loss how do I do that? Huh? Filter. So, why why a filter? So, what we have at the output is a periodic signal that is alternating between 0 and 3.6 volts at some frequency okay, 1 over T s right. So, now you can what decompose the periodic signal into what the average value and and basically harmonic components at 1 over T s 2 over T s and so on. Okay. So, obviously this uh, I mean problem can be solved because you know some frequency domain concepts you do know that uh, sinusoid uh, sorry a square wave is a sum of uh, its average value and sinusoid set all the harmonic frequencies the fundamentals and the harmonics fundamental and the harmonics. So, what next? You have these components at different frequencies the average value is at what frequency 0. So, you need some circuit that will allow the 0 frequency uh, uh, voltage to pass, but will reduce all of the other frequencies. What are the other frequencies? The fundamental at 1 over T s and all the harmonics. Okay. So, what kind of filter do we need? Low pass filter obviously. So, if I connect a low pass filter here, then here I could get only the average. So, how do I make a low pass filter? L C yeah, where do I connect L, where do I connect the C? So, low pass means that I need a low frequency short here and it should reject high frequency. So, I need a high frequency short there. So, that is a way of making an L C uh, low pass filter. Okay. So, now if you make sure that the cutoff frequency of the low pass filter is what? What should it be? less than 1 by T s. In fact, it should be substantially less than 1 by T s. Okay. So, if we do that then we will have all the high frequency components attenuated, but the DC will always pass through right because the capacitor is an open and the inductor is a short. So, we will have a lossless circuit now which will take you from 3.6 volts to alpha times 3.6 volts. All you have to do is switch the switches with a duty cycle of alpha. Do you know what the duty cycle is? Do you know the definition of duty cycle? I mean it refers to basically periodic square wave like signals rectangular waves which go between two levels like V 1 and V 2 and the period is T s it spends a time alpha times T s at V 2. So, this is said to have a duty cycle of alpha it is the fraction of uh, the period for which it spends in uh, high state. Okay. Is this fine? So, will the circuit work by itself please think about it and we will continue the discussion right. So, we have lossless switches lossless L and C will this actually work let us see. <coughs> 